Well, good morning, I'm Bob LaBelle, CEO of XTI Aircraft. XTI Aircraft is developing a hybrid electric vertical takeoff and land airplane, the TriFan 600. The TriFan 600 takes off and lands like a helicopter, and the fans are tilted in this direction, and then it transitions to vertical flight and can fly up to 300 knots at 29,000 feet. It's powered by a hybrid electric propulsion system, which is composed of a gas turbine engine, which powers three generators, which then provide electricity to electric motors in the fans. And in the vertical phase, that's supplemented by battery power, providing power directly to the fans. XTR was started by our founder, David Brody, around 2015 is when he started assembling the team. But he had the concept already in hand, came up with the conceptual design, and hired a designer to create this beautiful airframe, and then commenced to do a lot of uh, preliminary engineering uh, work. Originally, we're going into a traditional uh, propulsion system with two large turbo shaft engines and gearboxes, transmissions, all the things you find in a typical helicopter. Uh, it was a larger, uh, a heavier aircraft, and with more or less the same performance, and the price was about $12 million to the customer. We brought in Bi Aerospace, who's been a tremendous teammate for us, and they helped us, uh, or did prim primarily did, the hybrid electric propulsion uh, concept and design. We've gone out and spoken with suppliers to back that up so that we know we can do it with more or less off-the-shelf components. By removing heavy machinery, which would have to be um, crea mainly created specifically for this aircraft, if you look at transmissions and drive shafts and gearboxes, and then in addition, two large turboshaft engines, uh, you've, of course, right away taken well over a thousand pounds out of the empty weight of the aircraft. And there's a lot of redundancy built in. There's three generators. Uh, if you lose one, you don't even have an emergency. Each, uh, each fan hub will have two electric motors. You only need one. And, and each system has emergency mode. So if the batteries fail while you're in that vertical phase of flight, which probably lasts 20 seconds, 30 seconds at the most, uh, the engine has an emergency operating mode. It can provide more power. The generators have an emergency operating mode. They can provide more power for a period of time to get you back on the ground. Uh, same thing with the batteries. If the engine fails, the batteries can go into an emergency mode, provide enough energy to get the aircraft safely back down. Short takeoff, of course, is fantastic because now instead of the fans, all three fans doing a lot of work to lift the aircraft straight up, the wings are doing most of the work. So you're just getting it rolling. Once you get it rolling uh, as little as 700 feet, you're basically going to be flying. You'll, you'll transition quickly to uh, full horizontal mode with the fans in this uh, position. And you can add 1,000 pounds of fuel to the aircraft in that scenario, which takes you out to 1,200 nautical miles. And you can still land vertically. As long as you get down to under 5,300, you can land vertically. So you can take off it's with 6,300 pound gross weight, go an extra 530 miles, and still land vertically. There's a fan in the back, which uh, is part of the tri-fan setup. And this cover on the current concept is slides forward in when you're in vertical mode and when you transition to horizontal it covers. We'll probably have a clamshell arrangement that opens like this in the end because there can be some disturbance of course across this as air goes into the fan. The design is being iterated. The tail will be raised up to be a T-tail. We discovered early on that even in vertical mode as air flows out of the rear fan it's going to pass backward and it's going to impinge on the horizontal tail. So in order for it to have more effectiveness We'll go up here. The top of the fuselage will be the thin film, thin film photovoltaic layer. It'll be impregnated into the surface and it'll provide up to four kilowatts of energy. So on a sunny day, you don't have to turn even, you don't even have to drain any battery power during taxi or normal ground operations. You can just run straight off of that, that energy source. And uh, even even on a cloudy day, if you don't have enough, think about this, and this is getting off the topic of the photovoltaic cells, but you could use battery power on the ground, so the aircraft's gonna be quiet on the ground. You land and it, the engine goes off. Everything after that is on electric power, either through 
the thin film photovoltaic or directly from the batteries. In this aircraft, you know, it's going to be certified single pilot IFR. If you're holding the control stick and you want to just hold level in a hover, which you know is not an optimal aircraft to hover in, and you're affected by gusts, you don't need to move the stick to counter that. Every, the control surfaces all over the aircraft know you want to be in a hover and it will keep you there. We kicked off 2017 with a lot of energy, a whole new story, a whole new business case really because of the, uh, the numbers that I mentioned and uh, we started getting a lot of attention. In June we started a uh, pre-sales campaign where people can come in and place a refundable deposit um, which is now $25,000 and we've already accumulated uh, 58 orders for the aircraft. We reduced the price from 12 to six and a half million. We reduced the projected operating costs by over two thirds down to pure maintenance and, and fuel and other standard day-to-day -day operating costs are gonna be uh, less than $350 an hour. And that includes amortizing the replacement of components when they come up like the engine overhaul, that sort of thing. Because of the economics of the aircraft, we're seeing aircraft being bought in larger quantities by an individual or a company that will put it into service providing transport. That was not in our original business case. It was primarily going to be a personal aircraft or a uh, corporate type uh, aircraft that could be used for convenience. Now we're finding because of the price and because of the operating costs that operators who set up commuter-like services or on-demand services uh, can make money off the aircraft. So, I mean, it's a dollar a mile. If you divide that by five people, that's 20 cents per person per mile, which gets down pretty close to driving a car. There's a lot of activity, of course, in regional aircraft uh, trying to do the same thing with either a hybrid or all electric. Uh, you still have to go to the airport. So with this aircraft, of course, you have the convenience of being able to go from a helipad downtown to a helipad or on top of a building, wherever you, uh, it's allowed, from city to city or from city to uh, some off-site location, remote job site, or even to a private home if you have enough uh, space and, and you know the airspace allows uh, people to fly in in their own aircraft. There's just untold number of uses in so many areas. If you start walking around the world and talk about uh, LA to San Francisco or uh, Austin to Dallas, New York to Washington, Paris to London, Abu Dhabi to Dubai, and into India and China and everywhere else, there's so many city pairs where 670 nautical mile range is gonna be able to connect those cities a lot more efficiently than a lot of other modes of transportation. If you look at you know, this aircraft, you don't have to recharge when you land. You just keep flying all day long. If you fly so much that you don't have any more fuel left, you can just go over to an airport, refuel, and get back in the game. And you don't need to develop a lot of new infrastructure at the top of a building or onto a helipad to do the recharging that they're going to require. Uh, we have a contract with a company called Trek Aerospace. Really good team. Uh, they're, they're also dispersed in various locations, some are in Australia, some are in California. They've got some very unique uh, technology with respect to uh, the ducts and the fans that uh, are showing some really great performance uh, beyond what we even expected. We're already building a 60% scale prototype which will fly in September of next year, 2018. And that's going to help validate some of the uh, aerodynamics. A 60% scale prototype will be as representative as possible as a full-scale uh, first test aircraft that we'll build subsequent to that. The footprint's the same as a, uh, a, a, a light single turbine helicopter. Full-scale aircraft would fly in the following November of 2019. And that's when we'll commence, of course, the, the full test program with FAA, for FAA certification. Our approach is going to be to engage with FAA and try to use the new FAR 23 as much as possible. We recognize that there may be some elements uh, that, that, that get brought into it in the so-called powered lift category or whatever. Uh, we'll have a discussion with them, which we have not commenced yet, um, but we think largely we'll rely on FAR 23, which is also going to help schedule. For the passengers, I mean, you, you come in, you sit down, you have a huge cockpit, or a huge uh, cabin to sit in. It's, it's extremely spacious and comfortable with four seats. And uh, we're looking at interesting um, alternatives to uh, what the interior will look like in terms of uh, uh, visibility, looking out. 
We've found that um, because of, again, of the economics and the spacious cabin, that uh, we are convinced this is going to be an excellent medevac type aircraft. So we're looking at being able to place two litters in there with two attendants, and there should be enough room. We're, we're doing that on a mock-up also now to see how that goes, and we're starting to engage with those service providers. The original business case, which projected a thousand, was based on the earlier design, which addressed personal and corporate type markets and maybe a few other small segments. Now that we've had such much lower price and we're getting the deposits we are from people who intend to use it to put the aircraft in work to work as a service, uh, I believe that that's going to overshadow the earlier projection. So uh, we don't have our business plan based on it, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be 2,000 or more. The aircraft can be scaled to a degree. Uh, we'll, there's a, a TriFan 400, so that would have two in the front, two in the back, quite a bit smaller. Uh, there's uh, be like a 3,000 pound, 3,500 pound aircraft. The TriFan 800 or 1,000, of course, then would have either eight or 10 people in it. And we may be able to go to a 1,200, which would be 10 in the back and two in the front.